Hello everyone and welcome to After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst. Uh, unfortunately, we were a little late getting into the game here because of some audio technical difficulties we experienced uh, beforehand, but we should have everything sold out so you can actually hear the game today. And that's how we do it. <laughs> so... Again, welcome. This is week one of the 2015 season for the After Hours Gaming League. And this will be a match between uh, Amazon, Hamazon on the blue side. Great name. You know how I'm biased towards people who uh, have puns for names. So watch out for some bias towards the blue team this game. Uh, and Kabam, uh, which is a service that... Uh, creates and distributes even a lot of the sort of massively multiplayer uh, social games, I guess you could say. Um, largely, I would be surprised if you haven't played a game that was made by Kabam. Uh, <laughs> so let's get right into this and review the pick and ban phase. Um, we do see some pretty standard bans coming out of side, obviously from the Singed. Could actually be uh, some research done uh, by the Kabam team to see that there might have been a pocket pick with that Singed here uh, in the top lane. But it looks like it will instead be a top lane Jace to go up against Aurelia. Um, should be a pretty bloody matchup there. Um, Aurelia, obviously with her gap close, going to be able to get in and do just as much harass into Jace as he will be able to deliver to her despite him being a range champion. Uh, so we'll, we will keep our eyes uh, focused onto that top lane, looking for blood. Um, but perhaps more exciting even is going to be this jungle selection we have. Uh, we're going to be able to see Rex Sai here. Uh, was previously a, a ban consideration in the last week's, uh, or this week's earlier games yesterday. Um, so it will be nice to see one of the newer champions coming out here so we can see um, some jungling mechanics with a new champion demonstrated by this Kabam team here. Definitely looking forward to that. Um, uh, similarly, of course, we do have Callista uh, as the AD carry uh, for this uh, Amazon team. <laughs> um, and the question will be who will she uh, choose to uh, create the soul pact with? Um, likely, uh, it will still be Nami, despite here being uh, far more squishier the support than you would usually like to have with Callista. Um, so, we might see, uh, especially with that Nami first pick, something uh, a little bit different, where instead of uh, binding with or taking the pact with your uh, lane mate, so you can get the uh, combined auto attack uh, bonus damage from the passive ability. Uh, we might see something like a J4 taking the Pact instead, um, though that probably will be a less common option. Uh, and we will most likely still see uh, that Nami coming in as the uh, Soul Pact mate for Callista here um, as we boot up this client here. So we can show you those beautiful, beautiful icons. Here we go. There it is. Let's actually get it full size for you guys because I know you like to see things. <laughs> so again, uh, while Thresh was still up, they did first pick the Nami with this Callista in mind. Um, so there is possible shenanigans here, but aside from the J4, there's not really an ideal person to go in with. Uh, but even Nami uh, will be a fine person to really uh, take that uh, pact with because if Nami does ult in, uh, through Callista, she will be in uh, probably prime position to use her ultimate uh, in a possibly unique way from the back line towards the rest of her team so she can not only knock up everyone on the enemy team here but also send that wave towards her teammates so they can follow up engage by being hit with the Nami ability and getting that passive speed buff so there is a lot of potential for some interesting play coming out here and I am excited to see uh, what exactly happens with these players. And it looks like that will be the binding on to Nami. Um, so we will keep our eyes peeled for any interesting play here. And it does look like, speaking of interesting play, we are going to have that invade straight into the bottom lane taking an unusual route. So <laughs> there is a counter invade uh, being done as well. Um, unusual that they will be on both the same side. So very interesting here. We might see a clash of the titans here. 
at level one as they both back away from the invades if they are not spotted out by this blue ward here which it looks like they will be yes that's vision so they will know about this invade going down and be able to respond um likely uh this red team might think that there's something going on i'm not sure if they got vision of the bush they certainly know now that will be the nami bubble to start off so some key CC taking that Aurelia quite low with the Ignite taking onto her and the flash burn by the Azir. He's gonna just barely not make it out. The Callista auto too much and Thresh flashing over the wall. Great flash there. J4 not gonna be able to land the flag onto Thresh. So with that biscuit chomped down, he will be able to make it out of here with a recall. But that was first blood going over to this blue team. A great way to start out the match with a kill on uh, a first blood onto the AD carry here. She will not be going back to buy before uh, this landing phase begins, but they will have a level advantage coming in for an early level two. So we will keep our eyes peeled here on this bottom lane when that level two comes up, especially with some auto damage to start off this lane to try and even that back out. Some uh, harassed return from the Tristana here. Um, but that is going to be a very critical lane. It looks like uh, Thresh taking his time coming back to lane to try and help that Tristana uh, get some extra experience here uh, to hit level 2 approximately around the same time. Uh, but she was zoned out heavily by that Nami, so it still should be a solid level 2 advantage to this Nami uh, Callista team here. Oh, I'm, I'm just always enamored watching Callista uh, jump after those autos. Just a beautiful thing to see here. And that's some good harass coming down from Nami as they do hit level 2. But that's a quick level 2 to follow. And that's the rocket jump in. Will it be enough with the ignite ticking? No, one more auto attack from Thresh will do it. So that is a kill going over to the red side to try and even out this bottom lane. But unfortunately that did go on to the Thresh with that last auto attack. Um, so... Not an ideal target for the kill here. And with Callista already having gone back, she will just be picking up a longsword and boots. So boots definitely quite effective on her with that uh, ability to kite so strong uh, from Callista. Thresh not able to land the hook there onto the Nami who is alone right now. But so boots actually not the worst break uh, to go back with here and pick up. So Callista hopefully uh, going to be able to get some work done as she gets back into this lane, even though she will be a level behind here for a little while. And it looks like Azir taking quite a lot of harass here in this mid lane early. Not what you like to see as an Azir player. Oh goodness, we're going to actually turn our focus a little bit to that mid lane. Azir going to have to use that range uh, along with his soldiers to really farm out that middle lane if he wants to be safe. The Rek'Sai is coming in for the gank right now and she will start off the engage and that <laughs> that knockback from uh, the Syndra gonna be enough to save her and the Rend might be coming out here for the kill and yes that will be the kill. Callista is taking quite low but she will be just far enough out of that turret range to where she will not die in the second Rend because she did get the kill with the Rend. Uh, no cooldown was active for that so she was able to use it again to get that quick kill on to Thresh and that will be the Nightmare Callista coming out of the bottom lane, bottom lane in this game here. So all these earlier concerns I had about uh, the Shackle with a possible Nami or with Nami possibly not being uh, necessarily the most ideal situation if you can get in a uh, head in lane like this um, that will not be a problem because uh, even getting Nami ahead in her build, as we can see here, as she's already going for a chain vest, she's going to go for a little bit tankier of a build uh, rather than uh, more full utility Nami. So we will be able to, uh, so she will be able to actually be thrown into those team fights and have some survivability to land her bubbles afterwards to get a good heal bouncing target. Uh, and hopefully get a wave that will uh, make the follow-up engagement some great uh, showcase of that chain CC potential she does have. Thresh not going to be able to land the Q on uh, Callista right now. As we do see some back and forth uh, brawling going down here. Jace, uh, it's a good bait as the J4 comes in here to uh, get... 
the Rex I'm not going to be able to no, not going to be able to uh, interrupt that with uh, leaving the burrowed mode there um, to save the Aurelia. But yeah, a great bait by Jace there as the J4 came up to try and uh, keep that Aurelia interested and to use her gap close onto him. So when uh, the J4 did finally show up in lane, Aurelia simply had nowhere to go there. Um, probably would have been a better choice to burn that flash if she could have uh, at a sooner time, but unfortunately for her, not going to be the case. As Azir is actually going to be taking those J4 went just directly to this mid lane, going to be flashed on, but not going to be enough as the flag and drag probably will come down, and that will be the flag coming down from J4. As some action continues in the bot lane, that supersonic heal going through with the flash from Thresh. Unfortunately, Thresh not going to be able to pick off Callista with that flash. We do continue to see some brawling here. Aurelia, uh, with that Sheen now, going to be a lot more deadly in that top lane. With that Harass, going to be able to get some far more favorable trades than the just uh, Tear Doran's Blade Jace up top. And the action is going nuts right now. We do have Syndra coming down through this mid lane. She's going to spot out that pink ward. Um, as it looks like they're trying to set up for an early dragon here. Which, if they're going to be able to force out this bottom lane right now or get them chunked out, why not? Uh, we do have Syndra quite low, though. Needs to respect that Rek'Sai damage and actually is going to fall the Rek'Sai. J4 might actually get knocked up here by the Rek'Sai. Good flash, but that uh, knockup is not even going to be necessary as uh, Azir will use his soldiers to clean up that kill. And all of a sudden, that dragon no longer feasible, even though Callista is stepping forward, getting quite a bit of arrows into that Tristana. She's going to have to be careful um, about that Ren kill coming up again. Some good harass back onto J4, and that's the kind of trades J4 needs to make as the Aurelia does retreat, no longer able to kite out of there uh, as she is a melee champion. He's going to need to return a lot of his damage as the Aurelia backs off, so... Great play there from Jace. Hopefully you're going to see some more of that to keep those trades nice and even. Thresh stepping forward for the Flay, not able to land it, and getting quite a bit of uh, stacks from her passive here. The Ren not being able to come out and get him. She will be going down, and that looks like it might even be, yes, both of them going down here. Though we did lose the Aurelia in the top lane to Jace, I believe, during that conflict. Uh, that will be a kill on both of the bottom lane members for blue side and a possible dragon look coming in here. That is the pink ward thrown down though to try and uh, create create some vision at least that this dragon will be going down a normal ward as well before uh, Cinder is forced to leave here. And that will, with uh, Thresh being so low as well, going to be just a back here. Uh, and as that back is coming out, J4 is appearing right around there, so he might either just want to sweep out this vision or might try and actually contest, knowing that everyone has gone back on the red side. You know, it looks like he is just going to be on ward duty, try and clear out as much as possible, and go out and collect that uh, red buff for himself here. As Syndra farms out this mid lane, possibly going to try and create some pressure here. Uh, but Azir is back in lane with Rek'Sai lurking about. Uh, we're never too sure where Rek'Sai might pop out here, so she's looking to make something out of this mid lane here, but probably just going to go over to her own red buff right now, get some uh, razor beaks on the way. No, just going to hop over to the red buff there, create some tunnel paths. And we are seeing, as we look at the minimap here, we're seeing quite a lot of key tunnel paths being set up from the Rek'Sai. And that is uh, one of the best parts of this champion. You can uh, make your mobility overall so much higher uh, by just setting up a good network of these uh, tunnels that you can then uh, go through the entire jungle as if you were someone like Elise Sin. Thresh stepping forward to get the flay, but again misses that flay. He's going to step forward and take that auto damage. He is going to need to be able to land those follow-up flays. Jace... Taking a good chunk of damage, but able to knock the Aurelia back so nothing can come of it. Nami stepping forward for the double heal, but going to be flayed for it. And a good trade there overall for uh, the red side as Nami taking quite low. She will have to stay back as she heals up. Jace <laughs> going to continue to knock back that Aurelia every time she goes in. 
uh, to try and prevent as much damage, but that will mean the trades are less favorable for him as he's no longer able to use his ranged advantage uh, once he goes into the mode where he can knock that Aurelia back. So Aurelia, little by little, chunking down that Jace and uh, might be able to, next time when she goes in, uh, use her ultimate and finish him off if Jace isn't careful. Again, the Callista. Uh, we might be spending too much time in this bottom lane just watching Callista farm this out, but I like it. <laughs> so Nami, great ultimate there, gonna land two, and fantastic bubble as well with the slow onto the rock side from the heel. That still will be the Callista going down, but when a four for two, Nami actually going to be able to make that only a one going over one kill going over to uh, the red team there. So. Despite Callista going down, that actually was some great play from Nami uh, to make sure only Callista went down. And Jace, looking to take this top turret, actually will not be able to do so. A good chunk of hit points left in Azir. No, going to be knocked back. Not quite able to reach that Jace to get that last bit off. Though his soldiers might... No, <laughs> not, not quite. And that will be the dragon going down. Um, though Nami was able to get vision of it towards the end, the dragon does go over. First dragon over to the red side, and that will be the mid lane going out. A little bit riskier considering everyone was just that dragon, but Rek'Sai looks like she will pay for going in without her team immediately behind her, and actually Thrush going down as well, going over to the blue side here. So finally they will get that Cinder, and J4 going to flash to try and get the last kill onto that Tristana, but in the end, that still will be a two for two with the mid turret going over to the blue side, taken down. So, overall, uh, despite losing that dragon, they were able to get quite a bit of damage onto that top lane turret, and because of that rotation mid, they're going to be able to get this bot lane turret in addition to the mid turret. So, uh, with that four, uh, four man presence in the bottom lane to set up that dragon, actually a really good response from this blue side, answering with Overall, two turrets. Um, a great answer to an early dragon here if you can set up a trade like that. Uh, so, fantastic. Though we do see uh, the network starting to encroach out into the middle of the field here. Callista going to clear out one of those. Um, but these uh, jumping targets here with, those, uh, with that ultimate from Rek'Sai will start to create some global pressure if they do not keep clearing out those uh, tunnels out of this middle of the map here. And now that will finally be the top lane turret going down. So that is uh, overall three to zero turrets right now. All the outer turrets lost for red side despite uh, that favorable engage at the Dragon. Thresh gonna have to ult just to try and protect himself. Uh, Tristana rocket jumping away. They do not have the safety of that turret. Uh, Thresh looking to start a hook there to try and get this uh, engagement back now that they have the favorable numbers, but unable to land it, unfortunately. And that will be the sweeper not catching the ward that is right here, so they will not know that they had vision of that going down. And that will be the Azir turret going down as well for a little extra gold uh, over to the blue team. Uh, which could make a difference here in the next early dragon fight. Um, as they will go back and spend that little bit of extra gold. Thresh actually caught out here, probably going to uh, go down here as he does not have his flash anymore. And yes, that will be taking the Cataclysm, a key ultimate down, on the cooldown. Uh, but that will be the Thresh going down here. Over to the J4. As we see Jace here uh, successfully defending this top lane, it looks like all these turrets right now, the outer turrets for the blue side, are fairly secure. So we're going to need to see some sort of uh, play here using the map to their advantage from the red side if they're going to want to create some answers because despite the kills being uh, nearly identical, um, they will have a substantial uh, gold lead uh, overall from that global gold given from these turrets here. Especially as Azir starts to make more and more turrets that they will be knocking down. Callista gotta be careful here with the fresh coming back, but luckily able to kite away here. Uh, oh, unfortunately that Syndra stun not able to land goes right next to Azir, uh, but does not connect, so... Not able to create any kill right now. Syndra looking for 
uh, a more uh, unusual build path for here, starting with a tier um, that is stacking up quite nicely and going, uh, it's looking like uh, it could be even a uh, Rylai's uh, from Syndra, perhaps to get some uh, more CC from her team here. Uh, though Nami generally will provide enough, especially as she will be thrown right into the middle of those team fights from Callista. Uh, it will be a nice buy if that is indeed the route she intends to go for. She might just be picking up the Giant's Belt for a little extra um, tankiness. No, that will be the Rylai's finish. And Azir going to use his ultimate to successfully get away from this Jace, but will Jace be able to land the knockback? No, it looks like the soldier will take him far enough away. Oh, just barely out of range, but Azir going to flash to be safe. So actually, uh, that is a very good trade there, uh, or exchange, I should, should say, coming out of the Jace, actually able to take down that flash, put that on cooldown. That is a very hefty cooldown on Azir, who is a key target, so... As we do see J4 uh, trying to clear out as much of that network of tunnels as possible uh, when he gets the opportunity. And actually going to spot out this fresh ward here. Uh, very good use of the sweeper there. So it looks like we will start to see this dragon coming up as everyone rotates down a little bit more towards the pit. And the wards do start to come out. Unfortunately not able to catch that Nami. Any picks right now will probably result in the dragon, so this is a critical stage. It looks like with these minions here, they're going to try and create a siege, uh, hopefully to land a pick uh, opportunity from this siege, but if they're not careful and actually go for the turret, they might overextend a little bit. It looks like they will wisely retreat, knowing that they do not have uh, their outer turret to retreat to anymore. They're going to set up uh, a more defensive line of scrimmage. Uh, though Azir does bring up this turret, so... Looks like they're going to be looking to defend this uh, and keep from uh, allowing those minions to push up and make that dragon uncontestable. Though this will be uh, the uh, Rift Scuttler going over to the blue side, so they will have that speed turn up. And it looks like they're just going to try and rush down this dragon as quickly as possible. They do have vision of if Red would come in, and they see they're taking the long route, so that will be the free dragon going over to the blue side, unable to answer even with the turret here. And with that speed boost, they are not going to be able to catch out this Rek'Sai. And with that Azir turret uh, putting in some good damage on Anami, they will be zoned away. But that will be the second dragon of the game uh, going over to the blue side to even that up 1-1 one to -one, uh, in dragons. So very key dragon there to keep themselves nice and even actually uh, make sure that any engagements will be equal at this point. The hidden dragon buff... Uh, was giving the red side a little bit of an advantage before now. Thrush landing a great hook onto that Syndra who was immediately ulted away from the Azir who jumped in with his soldier. And that will be Callista taking the kill onto Rek'Sai to answer. Callista starting to go insane right now. It's a triple kill for Callista. Doing some great kiting, showing off those mechanics. Will she pick up the Thrush? No, Thrush going to flash away. Looks like J4 was actually trying to hand over that kill to Callista very slightly. Uh, but that will be the Thresh flashing over the uh, terrain right there to get away. So a triple kill onto Callista though. Right now uh, we do have Callista at 6 and 3. So Callista already with the static shift definitely going to be able to complete in her <laughs> Infinity Edge and a lot more when she goes back next. So Callista definitely going to be the key target to worry about here uh, on this red team. But with that uh, mobility, it's going to be hard to pin her down. They're going to have to start off the engage with some sort of catch onto that Callista. Perhaps a Rek'Sai tunnel in to get some knock up on her or some Thresh CC. Ideally a hook going down. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully um, for the red side, she, <laughs> Callista might get emboldened by this and might overextend a little bit and be caught out of position. Uh, but that will be the blue buff going over to Azir here. Make sure he doesn't have any mana uh, concerns as we go into this more mid-game stage. And as we look overall at the map right now, uh, we will see that the vision for the blue side is fairly solid. It still hasn't really been moved to encroach into the red side's jungle. But they do have very solid vision control over this dragon area that does need to be swept out. While as the red side we see a lot of darkness even among the line of scrimmage starting to creep into the top lane here. So those wards are going to be have to be have to be 
<laughs> excuse me, are going to have to be refreshed if they're going to want to maintain uh, that vision control of their jungle and prevent these uh, downed outer turrets from meaning a lot to this blue team. Uh, especially with the Rek'Sai network of tunnels, if they're going to want to keep that up uh, for the Rek'Sai global presence with her ultimate, they are going to need to keep control of their jungle here. And it looks like J4 is going to try to get some vision down right now. And he does, but he is hooked by, hooked by the Thresh. And with Tristana and the Rek'Sai here, and the Zira, unfortunately, to where he flag and drag to, it looks like that was almost enough for the kill, but not quite, but that will be the engagement starting off. Nami able to stop that engagement with her ultimate. Great ultimate there to save the team from an engagement that would have almost certainly gone unfavorably, but she will be hooked by Thresh as the Syndra is caught as well. Aurelia going in to try to get killed, but the turret damage is going to be too much, and Nami did make it out of there without too much damage on herself. Thresh gonna be taken out though. Stepping forward with that uh, play to try and save his team though they probably, well, possibly could have uh, retreated to that Azir turret, but that, the way that went down so fast, I'm not sure uh, that would have been enough to save Thresh. So probably the right play there, sacrificing himself for the team, but that will be this uh, inner mid turret going down if they choose to stay. Everybody's quite low, but yes, that will be the inner mid turret going down. So that does raise it up to now seven turrets to one. The key story of this game right now uh, definitely being that global gold advantage brought in by this blue side with just absolute control uh, dominance of these uh, global objectives. Every time those Azira turrets come up they do knock it down and take that gold for themselves. Uh, for if minions were to just take them down there would be no global gold given, it is just a local gold uh, reward. So they are sure to take those down and they are distributing uh, that gold amongst their champions right now. And Tristana a little bit too far forward trying to get the turret, but no, going to be jumped on by J4 so she will go down, but that is the Callista already gone, the main damage going to be gone, so Red Side might be able to make something out of this, J4 will be going down as well. And it looks like they're going to try and clear out these minions as quickly as possible to take something uh, here in this middle lane before that uh, Callista comes up. And that the hook! Oh, the hook onto Jace! Not what they wanted to see. Thresh will be going down to the Syndra in the end, but that will be the Jace also going down. And with just the Syndra alive with no ultimate, that will probably be this turret dying here. And yes, that will be the turret going down. Aurelia, a little bloodthirsty, wants some more, but wisely going to back away here uh, with the Azir putting down just a little bit more harass to try and zone that uh, uh, Syndra away and force that recall right now. But overall, a definitely needed uh, exchange there for the red side uh, to get that turret knocked down and try and even out the... Uh, uh, objective control right now uh, to get their map presence increased and there is quite a substantial farm building in this bottom lane it looks like they're going to t try and take this turret uh, with the wreck side gonna ult in to a nearby tunnel those networks coming into play but she is gonna be far away and will make it back in time to smite J4 coming in with the flag and drag not seeing the wreck side there perhaps baited in slightly uh, but this engagement not necessarily going in favor of the red side right now with Tristana taking quite low that crit and doing a lot of work. The J4 coming from behind trying to look for a pick and he will cataclysm with the Jace that will be enough to take out the Tristana and then Syndra going down to the Rek'Sai on the other team. Rek'Sai then backing off but Jace or J4 pardon is still lurking around Thresh. Somehow the flame not stopping the J4 <laughs> jump unstoppable. Uh, but Rek'Sai taking the lantern, good uh, sense by Thresh there to not only try to play him away, but also use the lantern as an alternate escape route. But unfortunately, here comes Callista in as the cleanup crew from the flank, unfortunately cutting off the retreat path, and that means both of them will be going down to an already out of control Callista, who's now up to 10 and 4. That might simply be too much at this point in the game to handle as we will see the gold lead with this middle turret. No, the middle turret will not be going down. Callista actually taken dangerously low. But even without that inhibitor turret, uh, that will be almost 
I believe a 6k lead? No, that's obviously an odd number. That will be a 7k lead. No, 5k! Oh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> oh, this math. I, I, you know, I mean, I can do calculus apparently, but I can't do basic addition uh, when I'm casting, so. Um, this blue buff will be going over to Syndra. Uh, really just going to be heading up to that top lane. Uh, so that will be Syndra getting the blue buff here. As things start to calm down here for a moment, uh, we do get a chance to look at these wards again. Uh, the blue side having great coverage, especially around the Dragon Pit, but now red side definitely able to invest in those wards and start getting that vision around. A nice little one-friendly auto attack to leash out that, uh, <laughs> uh, that gromp right there. So good guy Tristana helping out uh, with the jungler. Uh, make sure Rex I can get a hold of that. Uh, just a thing of beauty to watch these Callista auto attacks, and that uh, will be another Azir turret going down. Uh, I wasn't, I did not see if that uh, went over to minions or there were champions to get there, but uh, if there were, that would uh, be most unfortunate uh, because there's definitely already too much of a global gold advantage, so they're going to want to be very sparingly uh, using those turrets only when they absolutely need them for an engage. Uh, the bot lane for Red Side going to be taking that uh, bot lane outer turret. Uh, but that does leave this mid one vulnerable, and they're not going to be able to get it for the teleport, so that will be the engagement, even though the tele or the tower is going down. And Rek'Sai caught out with that chain CC, actually going to go down. This team fight quite a bloodbath right now, and J4 will be able to take out the Azir, even though he's ultimate away from the rest of his team, so they're not able to get an answer kill right now. And overall, that will be a two for two. Uh, but with the inhibitor turret going down, that will be overall advantageous for the blue side. With the base now cracked, uh, the inhibitor is exposed for any future... Excuse me, any future pushes in the middle lane uh, to try and get that inhibitor uh, fully down. Crash waiting in the wings here, hoping that Cinder gets a little cocky and overextends, but she wisely backs away, uh, knowing that she cannot see anyone else on uh, the enemy team right now. So again, we do see J4 uh, getting uh, quite a lot of kills to his name right now, um, but definitely going uh, the hard tanker out here. Going to be not the most ideal person to try to focus down in these team fights. Nami will have to use the Frost Queen's claim to get out of that engagement. Great use of the active there uh, to make sure she does not get caught out there, and neither does the Syndra. So uh, that will not be a key pick that uh, Red Side was looking for here. Definitely a great effort by the Thresh. If they will, or if they are able to create a pick like that going forward, uh, that could open up a lot of opportunities for some pressure. And we are at a stage in the game where uh, even the red side, who is not currently ahead, could rush down a Baron if they get an opportunity. So uh, if they are able to catch out that Syndra with a Thresh hook like that, uh, that would be a great chance uh, for a quick rush of a global objective here. If not a turret, uh, then possibly a Baron. Uh, but the red buff will be uh, stolen over onto Callista. So the objective control uh, really starting to show here as the buffs even start uh, to be lost to this blue side, asserting their dominance here with some great deep wards. Again, quick check of the vision. We don't have too much vision from the blue side, but they do have some deep wards here to get some general idea of where uh, this red team will be as they uh, move about their own jungle and they're trying to lay down some more vision around the Baron pit as they are looking to set up for that Baron. And right now we do see, uh, looking again at Syndra, she's going a far more uh, utility build um, with that Rylize for the slow, uh, the Seraphs uh, for uh, the shield on herself in addition to just the great boost of damage it does do over time and sh the cooldown boots uh, so she can provide that uh, uh, CC uh, with the uh, bonus of the Rylai's slow even on her basic Qs uh, all the more often. So Syndra looking to actually be uh, one of the ways to start the engagement. Callista caught out, going to take quite a bit of damage and with a flash in a rail he's going to be able to finish her off. Though Nami taking quite a low, no Nami does in fact go down and the chase is on right now with Aurelia 
going quite low. Will they be able to turn on her and at least take out this Aureli? No, she's going to be able to walk away from uh, the J4 with the Rek'Sai up, and that will be three for two, a fairly even trade overall with the action going down everywhere. But the Dragon has spawned, so this will be a great chance to get another Dragon onto their team and get a three Dragon lead. That could be how this team gets back in this. And with the stun down, oh, the drag not able to get J4 into the pit. Unfortunately, while the jungler was stunned, that would have been a perfect time to land a smite steal there. But J4 with the flag down just a little bit out of range, not able to drag over the wall and claim that steal. Uh, he did not have his flash up, so he would not have been able to flash back out. So that would have been a kill going over, but they would have definitely uh, denied a very key uh, buff over here on the third dragon. Um... For that 5% movement speed, which will help a lot, uh, especially w since they're going to be the uh, the team that needs to start off these engagements. It's going to be really key to continue to get those picks like they were getting uh, with that Aurelia uh, jumping in onto the squishy carries with that Thresh landing a hook uh, on the right person. So definitely not a dragon the blue side wanted to see go over, and that might be how red side gets in it from this uh, very strong dragon control they've been having all game. Again, looking at the items, uh, we do see uh, pretty standard items in the top lane for this uh, Jace. Um, going with um, some extra penetration uh, from the Black Cleaver here, uh, in addition to the Last Whisper. We must attend to other and Kalista just so disgustingly far ahead in her build. <laughs> it does hurt to look at right now. Uh, Nami going with the Twin Shadows, so hopefully able uh, to catch out uh, somebody, or at least know when the engagement is coming. Thresh landing the hook on a Jace, not going to follow through with it. Uh, but hopefully Nami, especially now that they do have the speed buff from Baron, or from the Dragon, excuse me, uh, they're going to definitely need those spooky ghosts to come out and let them know uh, what's going on, where these uh, team fights are about to break out if uh, they do not have the vision for it. Tristana actually creating some pressure here in this bottom lane, but she's going to go back to mid lane because this is still a Baron inhibitor, and J4 able to step forward and flag and drag uh, right past that wall and able to get the Azir, and without the Tristana back yet, that will still be a 3v4, or 3v5, and now even with Tristana back, it is still a 3v5. Callista will be taken out by the Thresh, and again, unfortunately, Thresh getting the kill on that one, but that still will be the inhibitor going down for the blue side, and overall, a 1 for 2, with the inhibitor going down, definitely uh, favoring the blue side overall here. And that might even be a Baron coming down if they should so desire, as two people are down with Rek'Sai, the jungler being down, the smite not being up, but it looks like with the J4 smite still on cooldown a little bit, gonna just uh, ever have everyone back up a little bit, have Jace try and lay down some more vision control around this Baron pit so they will know if anything does come about with that uh, crab not being up quite yet. And it looks like they are going to try and just rush this Baron knowing that everybody has recalled Jace actually, or J4, excuse me, being seen in the bottom of the map. Uh, going to be a key sign for them to just try and rush this Baron with the only smite in town. And not a clear decision actually going to be uh, going for this kill since they did get a hook onto the Nami and the camera not rotating around <laughs> to catch that uh, sin kill on the Cinder as well. Uh, but even despite that damage they did take from the initial uh, Baron damage that they did decide uh, very coordinatedly as a team, uh, props to them on that to back away from, they did get a 2 for nothing from that Baron pressure. Because without J4 there, they did have to, Blue Side did have to take some risky positioning to just try and stop that if possible. And while they were able to, that will be two kills over, a critical two kills that have opened up some map pressure. Um, unfortunately, it looks like they will not be able to get anything from it though. So they are going to continue to hang around, Thrush going to go back. Um, and it looks like everyone will end up dispersing here. Um, and that turret going down uh, without any gold being given over, so definitely an ideal zero turret there. Really clearing out some vision uh, by that bit, uh, dragon pit. Um, with the dragon spawning in a minute and a half, we could see uh, the next objective contested be this dragon uh, instead of the Baron. And 
if this dragon doesn't go over to the blue side, um, not only uh, will that keep blue down in their ability uh, to try and uh, create that pressure inside the base of the red team, but that will mean that would be a fourth dragon going over to the red side, so any future dragons will have that incredible buff, and that could be the red team's way to uh, burst into the lead here. Though they are still fighting uh, that five, almost 5k deficit that has persisted for quite a while now. They're doing quite a good job of doing so. We see Azir almost uh, going to have his zonius completed here. Uh, probably next time he goes back. So a little extra uh, protection for himself with that zonius active uh, if he does get caught out uh, by any future engage. And that will be the scuttle crab going over to the red side, so they will have the speed buff of the shrine. Azir trying to zone with those soldiers, doing a good job of it too. Thresh getting some good poke down, but they definitely don't want J4 to be the target. That Nami ult is down now, and Azir continuing to zone with these soldiers as this dragon comes up, getting some good poke down. And uh, right now we do see that all the ultimates are up for the red side. Well, again, that critical Nami ultimate is down, so they will not have that as a form of engage. They might have to rely on the Callista to engage, but Callista actually going to be caught out here, stepping a little bit too far forward, did not see the Aurelia in that bush, and she was able to jump on her and get that kill. And the Aurelia flashing into there, Jace going down, able to follow up with that kill, Azir taken out as well with the Syndra, and that will be a uh, three for one, including the early kill, excuse me, on Calista. So that will be another dragon going down, unless Jace can try and steal this one. But this time I don't think he will be able to with a much stronger presence in this pit and the focus on clearing those wards out as soon as possible. It looks like Tristana actually taking down Nami over the edge. Nami trying to do what she can to get that dragon herself even. Um, or uh, perhaps lay down some critical CC with a bubble onto uh, <laughs> the Rek'Sai uh, to prevent that smite so a tricky flag and dragon come in. But uh, Tristana just point blank throwing down a warder. Uh, to get that vision and just taking out the Nami, so actually uh, a kill going on to Tristana, which she did need, and will be of uh, quite a bit of use to her here as they do rotate back around for this middle lane to uh, alleviate that pressure and get this mid lane flowing to about back even now with the inhibitor respawn. So unfortunately, while that inhibitor was down, blue side not able to make much out of that, and in fact, red side has come back quite a bit while that inhibitor was down. So with that inhibitor pressure relieved uh, and the gold lead uh, dropping now finally for the red side down to only uh, about 2k gold. Hold that thought. We are going to see that Nami engage. It will catch on to Azir with the chilling smite. Azir going to have to ult to try and get away but with so much jump and gap close that will be Azir going down. Rek'Sai pretty tanky in the back line. Might create some kills back there. But Callista going insane. This is exactly what Callista wants to be left alone with the team fight. We do see the Jace finally going down, but that is with the Callista damage going to be three for one. So Red Side definitely didn't want to see that, especially with this open inhibitor again ready to be uh, taken out. Callista trying to bring the minions with her up this lane, uh, but they do need that Callista damage in here to clear out these objectives a little bit quicker. Hopefully uh, she will be here in time to take down this uh, already low turret, only at about a third of its hit points, almost a half actually, regening quite quickly. And with Thresh and uh, Rek'Sai, they are going to have to respect some potential, but they will take down the turret and then look to engage on this Thresh. They are going to choose to back away, just taking that turret. Probably a wise decision there. Um, looking to back away and take some other global objectives elsewhere, possibly a sparing. No, they're going to turn back and catch on to this Azir, who sent it a little bit forward, thought he was going to zone them away, but was not able to. Thresh wisely not going onto that hook with a teleport coming in, actually going to be going down from the ult by Syndra. And that could be the game right here, unless if they can make a play. They are taking quite a bit of turret damage under here, but that is everyone absolutely melting under this turret right now. 
And that is the uh, Tristana and the Rek'Sai going down as well, and Aurelia probably not going to be able to defend this Nexus by herself. <laughs> the scary Callista going to be enough to zone her away as the team does take that Nexus, and that will be the game. So, fantastic play from both sides. Red so close to coming back to this multiple times. Unfortunately, just not able to squeak out that last bit needed here. Um... But very strong play, I, <laughs> definitely a nail biter to the last moment here. And again, as we look at the score screen here, uh, we should not, uh, do not, er, <laughs> we should not forget to give J4 his credit, uh, ending up seven three and most significantly twenty. Uh, very key in setting up a lot of those engagements. He uses uh, CC that his champion provides very strongly through that game. Um, and did end up going a little bit more towards the damage side after he created some uh, initial tank items to try and put them away with what damage he had available with that Hex Drinker, with that Brutalizer. Uh, and as everybody knows, J4's damage ratios are quite strong. Um, so that uh, not very stark, but definitely significant uh, note needs to be made here. And as we look at J4, uh, he did not do much damage over all the champions. Compared to that Callista, who did go insane. Um, but he did uh, offer quite a lot of key damage as we see how much he was involved with those fight. All those damage uh, that we did see from him was going to champions for sure. <laughs> so definitely making a difference in that team fight. Um, unfortunately, we do see uh, the Aurelia 10, 5, and 8 not quite able uh, to use those kills uh, to get her team far enough ahead. Though we did see Aurelia jumping in very frequently. So knowing that she was ahead and was sort of the lead for her team with that advantage. Um, the only true advantage to speak of uh, for the red side here. Um, she did play that out very strongly by being very aggressive and not hesitating on jumping into that team to try and get to that back line with her flash, with her gap close, to try and create a favorable engagement that her team could then follow up on. Unfortunately, that just was not enough. Um, even with the bearing control that uh, did go, or the dragon control that did go over to the red side, uh, the kill and early gold advantage was simply too much for the blue side. And with that final pick, that was enough for them to push down the mid lane to get the kill on the Nexus. And here, a few minutes after the game has actually ended, I think that covers us for the game. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to know uh, what the schedule is coming up for any future games uh, with these teams or any other teams that are in the After Hours Gaming League, go to new, uh, the AHGL website, and all the schedule will be posted there. All these videos will be uploaded there so you can stay up to date with all these matches we are casting uh, and thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you here next time.